Hello! This is my final installment of my reanimating my undergrad thesis project. So, we're gonna tackle this first by creating some graphene. So, I'm first going to delete the default cube and insert just a regular, regular plane. Go over to edit mode, select loop cut, and I'm going to insert a small amount of cuts, about 10 or so. It depends on how many you want for your particular plane, but make sure that it's an even amount on both the X and the Y axis. So just so I can see the cuts that I've just made, I'm going to go over to wireframe mode and add in a triangulate modifier. So if you look at the documentation, you can see that it converts all the faces in the mesh to triangular faces. Additionally, I'm going to add in a subdivision surface modifier, which splits the faces of a mesh into smaller spaces, and it just gives it a more smooth appearance. And I'm going to apply both of those modifiers right in object mode, and you can see that it gives me a bunch of just stretched out hexagons. So I'm going to rotate that 45 degrees, go over to edit mode, and resize everything so that the x-axis is at a scale of 1, and that the y-axis is at a scale of 1.5, sorry. Um, there's no dimension to the z-axis, so it doesn't really matter. Select all similar faces at the very center and dissolve that vertice, and ensure that the final product is a shape that you can tessellate. And I'm going to add on a wireframe modifier, which just basically transforms the mesh into a wireframe version of itself. So let's tackle the next part, which is creating just a very basic 2D array. And as the name would imply, uh, add in two array modifiers and just adjust the um, X and Y factor values until it it overlaps upon itself and creates like a very seamless look. It's going to depend specifically on what size your object is and uh, yeah, <laughs> so just muddle around with those numbers until you get something right. For this part, in creating the curve modifier, I'm going to add in an Archimedean spiral and just very slightly increase the height there in edit mode so that I can You'll see what I do with it in a second. Um, I'm going to take those endpoints in that spiral and just stretch it out farther away so that it creates kind of like a line because the animation that I want to create is rolling a graphene sheet into a carbon nanotube and then unrolling it. So I'm going to make it follow this, um, this curve shape this straight to curve to straight shape. So add in a curve modifier after all of the array modifiers and move the mesh along whichever axis makes the most sense for your setup. And here I'm just going to adjust the size of the spiral and of the um, wire frame graphene until it looks like it's a very seamless carbon nanotube. Parts of this tutorial are just more muck around and find out what works best for your particular setup. Like, there is no exact science. Um, you can choose to follow the exact, exact settings that I use for this if you can replicate it precisely. But for the most part, you're going to have to just muddle around and find the correct numbers. So I'm going to animate this setup and start with the graphene sheet just way off and then move it along the y-axis until it coils into a carbon nanotube shape and add in a keyframe there, a location keyframe specifically. And I do eventually want that to unroll in the same direction, but I want this um, carbon nanotube shape to be at a standstill for a bit, so it emphasizes that this sheet does turn into a tube, or this sheet can be represented as a tube with the same material. So for this final bit, after setting up my basic animation, I'm going to go over to my camera and reposition it so that at, it starts off at first by just looking over at the top of the animation, but because this looks kind of boring and it doesn't necessarily emphasize that this sheet can be turned into a 3D shape into a cylinder, I'm going to add in 
an additional location for her camera. So add in a visual location and rotation keyframe at the very beginning. And then when our graphene turns into a carbonated tube, I'm going to slowly move that camera angle down so that it can more fully depict our setup in, in 3D space. Like it fully emphasizes that it is um, not a flat object anymore. And this is all fast forwarded because it just took a lot of scrubbing and me messing around with the keyframe locations until I found a, a look and pace that felt natural for the animation that I was trying to go for. It was just a lot of messing around. And at this point, I extended out the carbon nanotube so that you could um, very fully see that it was like a, an elongated tube existing in 3D space. I keep saying that, but I just want to hammer home how much I want that message to come across that in, in my visual depiction here. So I'm finishing up the scene here by adding in a plane, extruding the back edge, and beveling that edge so that it looks more smooth. And I'm going to stretch it out in the x-axis so it gives it a more infinite studio kind of aesthetic. And here I'm going to append materials that I've used for previous projects related to this reanimating thing. So just going into my carbon and tube gross blend file, I'm going to append the materials that I used for the carbon and tubes beforehand. In the shading tab, I'm going to just after, after which I select the HDRI and I don't recall which exact HDRI I used in previous projects, but I do know that the overall look that I was using was indoor and warm toned. So as long as I followed that general rule for how I set up the scene, it's good enough for me for, for these purposes. And here I um, applied the material from previous carbon nanotubes over to this setup here. And after changing over to cycles, the engine that I want to ultimately um, create the animation in, I'm going to just fine tune the scene after setting a basic orange pink tone to the plane, to the background, so that it mimics the basic setup of every other project that I've used. And again, you don't have to use this exact color palette or HDRI or material or anything like that. Just like Bob Ross, do whatever makes you happy. But most importantly, ensure that it gets the general idea of whatever story in science you're trying to get across. You want your visuals to strengthen the, the narrative that you're trying to set out, the ideas that you're trying to communicate. So here, even though a couple of things are very flowery and pretty looking, ultimately I think it does a okay job of communicating that graphene is essentially a flat version of a carbon nanotube and vice versa. So here I am just making sure that the movement of the camera and of the graphene sheet looks great. I'm not completely satisfied with it at this time, so I'm going to change the focal length from, what was it, like 50 millimeters or something like that, um, over to a farther away focal point. So it gives it a little more um, movement, a little more visual interest in, in the animation. Um, I don't want viewers to get bored when they look at something, and viewers get very bored after a, a relatively short amount of time, so it's very important to um, keep your audience engaged. So here I'm just letting that frame render so I can go over to the compositing node and very simply just add in a lens distortion node after connecting a viewer node so that I can see what I'm doing. Personally, I like the very um, minimal change that it makes. It, it just distorts the image just a very slight bit if you use a smaller value. If you use a large value in distortion, it'll give it like a very weird alien eye kind of look and it's 
ultimately distracting. And this is the final product of this project. So hope you enjoyed that super quick tutorial. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm very, I had a good time creating all of this. So thanks for joining me on this little journey. Hope you have a good rest of your day. All right, bye-bye.